Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and other next gen hardware. I'm Damon Hatfield, and as always, I'm joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of iGen's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Good to see you, Damon. You as well, and we are joined once again by iGen's executive editor of tech, Bo Moore. Bo, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. We've got some real next-gen hardware to discuss this week. NVIDIA has announced its new flagship GPU as part of its RTX 4000 series of graphics cards, the successor to its two-year-old RTX 3000 series. So, the first is the GeForce RTX 4090, which includes 24 gigs of G6X memory and is claimed to be two to four times faster than the RTX 3090 Ti. That will cost $1,600 and be released on October 12th. Then there's the RTX 4080, uh, it's claimed to be two to four times faster than the RTX 3080 Ti. NVIDIA says those cards will be released sometime in November and will go for $900 to $1,200. So, Bo, give us your first impressions. I noticed a lot of people uh, out there, uh, they, they seem to have some sticker shock after seeing these prices. Yeah, the prices here are really, really high. And basically, NVIDIA has just, the, the current market, there's the graphics card market has been all over the place for the past two years because of cryptocurrency mining, supply chain shortages, chip shortage, everything. And so GPU prices have been really, really high for a long time, but supply chain is still iffy, but crypto has crashed. And so there's now this flood of 30 series on the market. Prices have been plummeting there, but not so much for the 40 series, which are coming in at these very, very high prices. Now, the one thing to remember though, is that the 4090, that top end card, the, the 90 variants of NVIDIA GPUs have never really meant to be for the mainstream consumer. They are meant for workstations, for absolute high-end enthusiasts. They're just not where you're going to get a good bang for your buck in terms of price to performance ratio. The 4080s though, that's usually what we consider kind of the top end of the mainstream GPUs, what you're, you're going to maybe be buying if you are a gamer with some cash to, to burn. But for it to come in at $1,200, that's, that's still pretty, pretty, pretty high. I'm old enough to remember when two 3DFX cards, like two Voodoo cards, that was like 600 for two of them. And that was the, <laughs> that was the big, big, best you could do in the 90s. And that was expensive. Yeah. Well, do, do, the, uh, do the specs of the 4080, do you think they, they back up the price? Are they impressive to you? They are, yes and no. Uh, this is where the, the, the 4080 is coming in. What's interesting about the 4080 is, is there's two variants here that NVIDIA is releasing, the 4080 12 gigabyte and then the 4080 16 gigabyte, which when NVIDIA has done and, and when graphics card makers have done these multi variants of the the VRAM that's that's what the that 12 and 16 gigabyte number is usually that's the only difference between the two variants in this case though the core counts the tensor the even the the clock speeds are actually a little bit different on these two cards so really what we're looking at is it would be better to either call the 408016 call that a 4080ti or call the 4080 gigabyte that's normally what we would call the 4070. Of course, I'm sure in the future though, Nvidia is going to still launch a 4080 Ti and a 4070. They will probably be slight adjustments around what we're seeing right here with a little bit of price tweaks, but it is pretty unprecedented to see the 4080 tier coming in so high. And I think Nvidia is playing a little bit fast and loose with the, the naming conventions here to kind of trick us into thinking that it, it's something to, if, if you go back to the 10 series, the 1080 was, I believe, 499, maybe 599 when it launched. And, and as I said, like that, it's expensive, but it's within reason for a, a gamer making to look a look, make a big upgrade on their their rig, you know, roughly the same price as a, as a new console, it, it, taking out, you know, the other the, the rest of the PC. But usually if you're doing a, a, a GPU upgrade, you're just swapping out the GPU. You don't need to do a full rebuild. That was reasonable. 1200 not so much. For that price, you could buy a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X and a few games. <laughs> um, I know we're not comparing apples to apples here, but based on what we know about these cards, can we make any sort of comparison to, uh, to the 4080 and then the PS5 or Xbox Series X in terms of you know, how much more powerful the 4080 should be? 
Yeah, so you, you hit the nail on the head right there, which you really can't compare because they're, it's comparing apples to oranges and, and the oranges are chips and the apples are <laughs> something entirely different. But uh, if you wanna just look at the shader teraflop performance, which as we've talked about before, teraflops are not the best indication of graphical performance. There's all sorts of other things that'll go into this, the optimizations of the game, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just saying all that to, to get it out of the way. If we are just looking at the raw teraflop numbers, uh, we've talked about before how the PS5 is 10.28 teraflops, the X Xbox Series X is 12.1. Uh, looking at the 4080, 12 gigabyte is 40 shader teraflops. The 4080, 16 gig is 49 shader teraflops. And if you wanna shell out that $1,600 for, if you're buying three consoles worth, uh, 80 sh shader teraflops for the 4090. So yes, they are much, much more powerful, but does that mean that these cards are eight times as powerful as the consoles? Not really. Uh, you, you could say that, yes, on the, the raw numbers on paper, but does that mean you're gonna get an eight times improvement in performance? Absolutely not. It, it, when you get into these high-end levels of performance on these cards, a, a doubling of the quote-unquote on-paper performance may only translate to a 5, 10, 15% upgrade in terms of frames per second. Well, Ryan, they, we're coming up on the second birthday of both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, and we've talked a lot on the show about how the transition into this, this generation has been much slower than in the past. It feels like uh, both consoles have one leg in this generation and still one leg in the past generation. What do you think about the idea that uh, even though we've got these very high-end new graphics cards coming up for, for computers, it's actually the consoles that dictate you know, what, what developers are able to do with graphics because that's sort of like their bench. They can't go too much higher than what uh, an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 can do. Even though there's these other cards out there that could do a lot more, they're kind of like, do you think they're held back a little bit by these consoles? I think that's reasonable to surmise. I mean, there's just so much money in console gaming that developers have to allocate resources to making sure it runs great on those. And sure, if you can spare an eager programmer uh, some extra time, maybe towards the end of the project during optimization to to take some extra advantage of, of those new cards. Maybe, you know, for all we know, there may be even some business arrangements where NVIDIA comes in and says, hey, we we want to we want to try and sell some cards here. Uh, hey, AAA game developer, we want to give you some money so we can get some resources put on really dialing in on these these new cards. Um, I mean, as a sort of weird one-off example, it's is, is Portal. The, <laughs> there's the there's they're doing a new Portal in uh, with, with this DS, DLSS three, right? It's, yeah, they're, they're, Nvidia announced uh, Portal RTX, RTX which is yeah. a, a ray tracing makeover for <laughs> Portal. Which interestingly, it's just a mod. And, yeah. and, and what, what what is really cool though is they they're releasing RTX Remix, which is essentially just a set of modding tools that will let you do these ray tracing overhauls on pretty much any game. I, I don't know exactly how plug and play it will be. I don't know if anyone will be able to do it, but certainly people who are familiar with modding games and, and increasing graphics, and mods have always been the place where games are put, truly pushed to their limits. If you think of things like GTA, GTA has always been a great looking game, but the PC versions modded out with- Oh, the realism texture, mods. Yeah, the, yeah, the realism mods, texture packs, reflections, all, that's where you, we truly are seeing the boundaries be pushed on these high-end, absolute top yeah. visual fidelity of games. To your point, though, Damon, uh, I, you're right, though, with this, with this one foot in, one foot out transition that we've seen that's been exacerbated by the, the pandemic. Yeah, we're, we haven't even seen developers fully tap into the Series X and PS5 yet because they've been, they've been needing to support the PS4 and Xbox One for, for business reasons. And now finally, it seems like it seems like God of War Ragnarok's the last of the big first party titles that's su that's supporting the previous generation. E everything from Microsoft here on out on the first party side that I'm aware of is Series X, Series S only. And and with Sony, they haven't really made any announcements, but I'd be pretty surprised if Spider-Man 2 you know, holiday 2023, maybe 
Wolverine, presumably after that, are, I'd be surprised if they're still supporting the PS4 at that point. But what I will say, Damon and Bo, is that, uh, but what stuff, you know, the, the 4000 series, I won't be upgrading to that because uh, I'm in a privileged position as it is, but it's great to see because the further the NVIDIA's, the APUs of the world, uh, AMD's of the world push, then when we are ready for, I don't know about if, if it'll necessarily trickle down to the inevitable PS5 Pro and Series X 0.5, mm-hmm. <laughs> but the next Xbox and PlayStation 6, the, the, the no, more normalized and, and cheaper, you know, the, the further that NVIDIA is able to push, we'll just, it'll just make for even better consoles next time around. And so it's, it's always good to have the, one of the market leaders pushing the technology forward because there ultimately will be a net benefit for all gamers. Just it might be on a bit of a time delay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bo, I'm going to ask you to compare apples to oranges one more time. When the inevitable PS5 Pro comes around and the, the upgrade Pro version of the Xbox Series X, do you think and this is just, even if you don't know, I'm just, I'm just curious, do you think they could get anywhere close to where the, the new 4080 is? With, with current generation Pro versions. The current generation Pro versions, I think we might be looking at somewhere in the maybe 20 to 30 teraflop range. I don't know. Like If we think about the PS4, sorry, yeah, yeah, PS4 and the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One and Xbox One X, they went from, I want to say the low one, ones. Yeah, the one, low one, one, four and one, two, was it, for PS4 and Xbox One? And, and those went up to about four teraflops and six for the, for uh, the, for the One X. Yeah, which yeah. there, you know, you're looking at a three to four X gain, basically. Yeah. So if we're looking at taking that same logic, if the current gen consoles are at 10 and 12 respectively, if we get a three to four X, yeah. then we'd be looking at 30 to 40 teraflops, which is right where the 3080, 3080 uh, current gen NVIDIA card is, or what more likely will be about where the 40 series 4070 or 4060 will probably fall right around that range at about a likely $500 price point, which yeah, the, the one thing to add, though, is we haven't seen it yet, but AMD did just announce that on November 3rd, they will be revealing the their next generation GPUs, which will be built on the RDNA 3 architecture, uh, where the current gen consoles are built on the RDNA 2 architecture. So when those get announced, when, when those new cards come out, I think that it's pretty likely that the inevitable PS5 Pro and Xbox Series X Pro, whatever it ends up being called, will likely be built on that RDNA 3 architecture. So when those cards come out, maybe that'll be our first glimpse at the mid-cycle refreshes. Interesting. Well, I know there's a lot of interest out there in the new um, RTX 4000 series. IGN's coverage has been super popular. So the the 4090 is out uh, in October, October, what did I say? October 12th for that. For all you fancy pants out there, and then the 4080 about sometime in November again, 900 to 1200 dollars. Let's check the results of last week's poll. We were talking about how long should Xbox keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Of course, Xbox in the process of attempting to acquire Activision Blizzard, that would give them ownership of the Call of Duty franchise. Phil Spencer said, uh, I, "I believe they're going to keep it on, keep the Call of Duty franchise on PlayStation at least three years. So." Who knows what will happen after that? But we were asked you, how long should uh, Xbox allow PlayStation to or allow PlayStation to have Call of Duty games? The winning result was indefinitely with 58%. Ryan, perhaps not, perhaps unsurprisingly, a lot of PlayStation <laughs> yes. owners don't want to lose the yeah, ability to exactly. play. Exactly, shocking. Duty. Gamers want a big AAA game <laughs> on their console. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it will be really interesting to see how this plays out with regulators, and then assuming Microsoft clears that hurdle. With, uh, with this little now public spat between Microsoft and, well, Phil and Jim Ryan. I think it's a little one-sided. I think the, spat, the spatness is a little bit one-sided. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's a good point. A new poll for you to vote on for next week. What's the next graphics update you plan on purchasing? Will you get an RTX 4090, maybe a 4080? Or do you think uh, a PS5 Pro or an Xbox Series X Pro would be your next graphical update? 
Make sure to vote at IGN.com. We'll share the results with you next week. And that'll do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to both Ryan and Bo. Thank you to everyone working behind the scenes in our LA and San Francisco offices to make this possible. My name is Damon. We'll be back next week, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern, with more Next Gen Hardware News. We'll see you then.